Good day, my name is Luke from LukeZeem.com and today I'm just updating my HDR video tutorial. I wrote one about nine months ago and there's just things that I've changed in my workflow and other ways I go about things so there might be a few techniques I can show you that are new. I usually post my video tutorials here in my tutorials section and there are a bunch of these that you can go through. I also share good ones from other authors as well which I think would help your photography. But if you just click down here on the sidebar, this little play button, that is all my YouTube videos. And you can just scroll through all these and have a look. Here is my free HDR photography workflow that I did around nine months ago. And you can see it's had 1.6k views. But we'll just go through and do our new one today. And what I've done for everyone is put all the HDR software that I've used in this tutorial in a list. So it's under the tutorials category in my website. And if you just scroll through, I believe it's on the second page now. It's the one with the bullet train. So yeah, here. A comprehensive list of HDR software and plugins. And I've separated them into platform, tone mapping, and then plugin software. And there are lots of discounts here as well if you just go through. Uh, lots from Topaz, On One, as well as the one from Photomatics Pro, which you can get 15% off all the Photomatics Pro software. And the codes are always just Luke Scene Photography. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I go from this image to this image using using Photomatics Pro. On one Perfect of X4 and Topaz Clarity, as well as some software like Noiseware 5 and NIK Collection as well. So the first step in creating a HDR image is obviously shooting. And to do this, it's best to shoot in aperture priority mode. And you'll want to shoot at least three images. And then if you can do it on your camera, you can shoot five like this these five here. So I shoot a Nikon D800 which has a HDR bracket feature within the camera and then I manually shoot these images on the Sony RX100 Mark II which was released about two weeks ago. It also has uh, some inbuilt HDR features as well which are really good. So today I thought I'd edit this image from Coney Island in Sydney Harbour and this was shot on the Sony RX100 Mark II and I used a tripod and then I manually adjusted the EV settings. So I did a zero shot, then the plus one EV, plus two EV and then this was the minus one EV and the minus two EV. So I select the five images, I right click and then I export to Photomatix Pro. Here I don't need to align images because I used a tripod. I'm going to remove ghosts with the selective deghosting tool because I always do that with water. It'll make it look a lot nicer if you just use the one image in water. I'll also reduce a little bit of noise because it was the ISO 400 and it was uh, quite dark as well. The other selections that I'm going to make is this one. I like to re-import straight back into Lightroom and I also choose that it is a TIFF which is pretty similar to the original RAW file. So let's export this and it will just load them into Photomatix Pro. Now this is the main reason I love Photomatix Pro over the other software like HDRFX Pro 2 or Olaneo software engine because I get to manually select an area like this where I know there's going to be movement because the water was moving in the ocean and there was a couple walking down the path here. Now I just select that area, I mark it as ghosted and then I select which photo I'd like the HDR software to use. So if I select the zero you can see now how that's all come up crisp and the couple is just one group of figures rather than the five that would have been walking along here. 
and we just select OK, and that will take us to our tone mapping section. We'll probably want to use Details Enhancer, and we'll go to Default. This part of the HDR workflow is a personal preference, and it's done by adjusting these sliders here on the left-hand side. Each of the sliders will have a dramatic effect on the image, and I'll show you a couple of them and how they work. So, for example, the color saturation, you can see, goes very bright all the way to black and white. The strength slider is your HDR strength. Somewhere around 70 is a very reasonable choice, and often I'll leave it around there as well. This looks like it could definitely use some luminosity to brighten up the city lights. Let's increase that. Adding some contrast. Now the lighting adjustments is almost like moving the light around the image. You can also choose for some lighting effects as well. I want to like bring out the opera house and the city skyline as well. So about there. Smoothing highlights. If you do have highlights that need smoothing, often around 20 will be good enough. So it might be in somewhere, let's have a look here. I'll give you an example. Yeah, we don't have that many blown out highlights. You can see right here on these bits here how they adjust and they become much brighter. But if you had an image where there was lots of blown out areas, that slider might be very important. So let's just leave it around 16, 20. White point and black point, also very important. They will make major adjustments to the image. So let's have a look at this. I'm just again selecting one that's good for the image. There are also presets you can get. Uh, photographers will release their presets and sell them if you like. So I could do this and then save it and then be able to use these settings exactly again next time. Gamma, another very important one. So let's have a look at the extremes again. You can see how it's really adjusted the entire look of the image. But back to round one, and then we'll just make small adjustments. Temperature, so to the left is going to be cool, to the right is hot. I think cooling this one down just slightly is the go. Micro smoothing, all the way back to zero will sharpen up the image. Our highlights and shadows, we can change the saturations of these. It's perfectly acceptable to just leave these. Use your filter software after this. So look, I'm pretty happy with that. I'll re-import that back into Lightroom now. By just clicking the save and re-import, and that'll bring it back into Lightroom for me. So our tone map image has been re-imported into Lightroom, and it has been labeled the as a TIFF from the five images. And now we want to load it into Photoshop as a layers document. And you select your five images plus the tone mapped image. And now that we can do this from Lightroom instead of Bridge, it's much easier. So we just go edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. So let's start with the first one. I add a layer mask to it. And what I like to do is hide the top layer by looking at the bottom layer underneath. So hiding, and we can see what this layer looks like, the second layer looks like underneath. So where I want to add a mask for this is definitely in the highlights up here on the bridge and on the pylon over here, and I'll have a look within the city as well. So let's zoom in a little bit, starting up here. You can see how that's blown out a little bit, and there's more detail in our minus two EV shot. So we simply select our brush, bring it down to a size that'll fit within this area, and select an opacity that you would like to use to bring it through. So let's use around 50%. You can see how it brings it back. By selecting X, that's removed. You can see here white and black. Black brings the layer below to shine through. White hides it. So that's a good little tip for you. So let's use black again to bring this through. And I would just go through the image 
like this, bringing through areas from layers below into this top image, my tone image. Quite quickly, I'm doing it how I'm just doing it quickly to show you how the process works. So we'd go like this. I would probably use a less extreme percentage in areas like this so it's not very stark. And I would work gradually building it up. Often things like you can see light trails that came from different images underneath and they show up a little bit like this halo or something. You can remove them later or if you find that particular image where they're from, so like this one here, I can add that in when I get down to that layer. So let's just have a look at the Opera House. I might want to add a little bit here where there's, it's been blown out. And it's just a matter of painting in without brush onto the mask. Let's have a look at the city, some of these lights. Okay, I'm going to go through and I'm going to mask in from each layer and I'll come back to you when I'm back down to the fifth one. So I've gone through and done all the masking from the five original layers and the reason you do it is just to get a better lighting within the image. It allows you to control which parts are bright and which parts are dark as well. So yeah, it's just better control for the user. The next part, what I like to do, is it depends on what you're looking for in the image, but is to straighten up vertical and horizontal lines. And I do this with rulers. So let's bring a couple into the image. Simply drag them across from your ruler there. So <clears throat> somewhere near here. Now it's just Command A to select all, Command T to transform. Then you right click and select warp. And we're just going to try straighten up the verticals in this bridge. And we're also looking at these buildings within the city CBD. This was shot at 24 millimeters on the Sony RX100 II, which equates to around 10 millimeters as well. You're wondering. So it just has a little bit of a slant. So I'll try and want to straighten up this building here as well. So we're just making small adjustments. That'll do. Hit enter. And after this, I want to remove the rulers. So I go up to my move tool. And it's just a matter of clicking and dragging on each one. Let's drag those across. You want to deselect the area, so Command D. And I usually save at this point because Photoshop has a tendency of just breaking on me. <laughs> add, a, add a new folder. Let's call it Working on TIFF. Yes, and I'll save it as Sydney from Coney Island. Save. Okay, so now we get to some of the fun stuff you want to do, which is where you can be creative and make changes to the image, just with color, lighting, contrast, and it's all a matter of just, you know, having a little bit of a go and enjoying it. So where I usually start is with my sharpening. So I'll go to NIK Collection, which is made by Google and I will go for the pre-sharpener and this works on a percentage scale and I usually go around 30 or 40. You can see down here in the loop tool where it's got a before on the left and after on the right. Selecting OK. There are a bunch of other little selections in there that you can make and you can learn about them yourself if you're going to buy that program. 
So I'll just collapse those together, Command E. Next what I do is I use the Define.2 and this actually removes a small amount of noise. It does the automatic analyzing right here. And you'll see, as again, a before and after, you can see all the noise on the left and on the right. But because I want to keep all that detail and sharpness that I just created in the software before, I quickly just create a mask, get out my brush, and I paint in any of the bits that I wanted to remain sharp. It can make a big difference if you're going to be printing large. If you're just using this for the web, you don't have to bother doing this. So yeah, just quickly do that, maybe on the uplands and some in the water. You can see the mask here, what I painted in. <laughs> it's a little bit messy, but you get the idea. So now we just collapse that together again, Command E. So filters, this is again personal choice. Uh, I use Topaz Labs filters, as well as On1, which I've got over here in Automate. So Perfect FX4 is where I'll start. This has got about 450 different filters to choose from. It's pretty nuts. Um, you can layer them as well, which is what is great about this program. So let's start somewhere like Landscape. I'll go down to the Magic Ocean setting. And here again, like in Photomatix Pro, you've got your slider. And all the way to the right, or all the way to the left. All the way to the left is zero. And I'll just add a little bit of that, say 13%. You can also hide the layer and see what it looked like before and after. And you have options here as well. But I'll just go with after. Next, I will add adjustments to the color. I want to make it a little bit cooler. So color correction, auto color, and then this will give me a lot of adjustments that I can choose down here. So I'm just going to bring it down a little bit. Um, just a little bit. And you can see how much of a change that will make. Bring that around 60. Next up, let's see, let's take it back into Photoshop and we'll make some other adjustments as well in other filter programs. Probably going to use Topaz Clarity. Topaz Clarity is basically 50 or 60 different presets that are all just about contrast. I'll just collapse those together because it makes it easier for me. Or if you wanted to you can see again before and after. If there were parts of the image that you wanted to keep, create a mask and use your brush again. You can paint through what you wanted to keep. So let's say the lighting was a bit warmer on the ocean here. I'm going to keep that. So I'm just painting it through. But yeah, collapse them together. And let's go to Topaz Clarity. I duplicate my layer. Select the filter, and that will just load up on this one layer here. The reason I do that is so that I can mask in from the previous uh, image. So over here on the left, if you just roll your mouse over, you can be given a little preview. And up here you've got your categories to select from, so we've got architecture, Documentary, fashion, general, landscape, macro, nature. I tend to hang around the general and the landscape ones. But what I'm looking for is a little change to the color and just increasing black a little bit. I don't want too much. That's good, the micro color boost one little too much micro contrast there so I'll drop that down and yeah so it's preset that's given you uh, selections over here and these are all adjustable so it's just a matter of moving them around to the ones that you like probably going to raise the white level a bit might give it a little more pop around to zero the other great thing about this particular uh, filter program 
is the HSL panel. And this is a color one. So you've got control over the hue, the saturation, which you can see has been raised overall to 0.10. And each individual color can also be adjusted. So the greens, all right, let's click OK. Back into Photoshop, just a little bit of masking. And then what will I finish with? I still like to add some glow and then I always end up with a little bit a final like sharpening. Also got to remove a little bit more noise. <laughs> so we're almost there. Let's do this. So do I want to keep anything from the bottom layer? I don't like this bit how it's turned out so green so I will mask some of that out. Just turned out a little too lime for my liking. Almost like there's mold there or something. Anyway. Otherwise, I think it looks good. Could probably bring this down a little bit too. I'd prefer a lighter sky. There we go. Now, I want to bring out a glow here in the ocean. So let's go back to on one. I'll automate. Usually this will show up in the filter panel, but uh, on one hasn't written it for a Photoshop CC yet, so it's in our automate. But that's easy enough to do. Let's bring it down to the glows. So let's have a look at some of these and how they work. See, that looks nice. I won't be using it on the entire image either. Just so you know. I'll be using it selectively. Hmm, that's kind of nice too. But which one was it that I liked? Hmm. I think I'll go with Hollywood Glow. Apply. Back into Photoshop CC. Now just slide this layer underneath because it created a new layer, a copy. Create a mask again, bring out our brush and paint in some of this glow. around here. I might even just do this whole bit of the sky along these lights. Take it out of this bit of the city. All right, let's have a look at that mask and see what I painted in. Might fix that up, but anyway. Next, I would use my output sharpener, but first let's check the sky to see the noise in it. So how bad is that? Yeah, in parts here, I would take that out. So I would use ImageNomic Noiseware for that. So it's very powerful. So let's go and have a look at this. See how I created a new layer? So I can mask in underneath. So this comes with a bunch of presets and you can see the default is actually pretty good but you can increase these quite dramatically I'll just go up to this part where it's actually quite strong so I want to try and remove that and it's just a matter of using the sliders or the presets but I find doing it myself is good enough okay select OK So we're just going to paint in the sky now and I can show you the mask if you like and that's often a good way to work because then you can see exactly where your brush has gone. The downside is obviously that you can't see the colour uh, of the image but it's easy to switch off and off, off and on. So I'm just doing this rather quickly. 
and that's all I want. Let's have a look in the water just to have a quick see at the noise level. Hmm, some of this could be removed. I am going to use the output sharpener from NIK as well, so that's probably going to add a little bit more noise. So doing this now is a good idea. Okay, collapse those again, and yeah, let's use the sharpener, the output sharpener from NIK. This again is using your loop down here, and it gives you the before and after. So I probably want something around 40%, 30, 40% 40 again. That looks good. Yep, nice. The final part is a luminosity mask, and the reason I do this is it just gives it a little bit of pop, and I'll do it 30 seconds really quickly. You can look in my tutorials and find it if you'd like. Okay. I can file Save As. Uh, let's save it back into images. This last bit is pretty much up to you whether you do it, um, but it's back in Lightroom. And it should come up here. If your image doesn't show up, so I saved it as Sydney, so it will come up here. Just right click on images. Synchronize folder. Let's show the missing one, yes. Oops, sorry about that. 52 now instead of 59. Should be last bit of alphabetical. Nope, come up here. And it is these four sliders that you want to adjust. So highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. Now, if you hold down Alt and you move the slider, you can see where it's starting to be blown out and where it's not. So you want to try and get it to the point where it's just starting to show for that particular slider. So <clears throat> you can see I can bring the shadows right down before they even start to blow out. Same with the whites. I actually like having them a little high. Blacks, looks like they can be increased quite a bit. There we go. That is my complete workflow, or my typical complete workflow. And I have other ones that I use as well, uh, with Oleneo and the HDRFX Pro 2. But the problem with those is, is that they don't have selective deghosting. And a lot of my images have moving objects in them, whether that be cars, planes, water, people. And I find the software, why it's good, it just doesn't have the manual control that Photomatix Pro has. So thanks for watching my HDR video tutorial. I hope you got something out of this and that your HDR photography is going to improve. If you want to find my work as well, you can go through my website lukezeme.com and just go to the shop link and that's where I upload all my best images. So it starts, I've put together a list of my favorites and scroll through these. I like them in large format as well. So clicking on one will take it to the main gallery. And you can see here I've just got lots and lots of HDR images that I've created from Australia and Japan. All right, thanks a lot. Uh, you can leave a comment below or just press a like or share the tutorial for me. Thanks.